And I got into folk music uh, through having a very bad time at the local grammar school, realising that I had no future there at all. And I bought an electric guitar. Uh, it took me six months to learn how to tune it, and then I started going out and seeing groups and hearing echo chambers for the first time and seeing tremolo arms and whoa. Oh, um, I was in a couple of you know groups like playing at youth clubs and things like that. You rapidly get better. Uh, the, the, the best of the local groups got to play at the floral as support. The manager, then manager at the time, Alan Burzall, was pretty canny. And he'd let, he'd let you play on a Tuesday, it was like a record hop, but he'd stick one group on and play a few records, it was nothing very serious, just to weigh you up really. But we were successful with that, we played all over the, the, the local venue. Any, anywhere really, everybody wanted a group on, it was quite easy. And then we got on the support. Uh, you're kind of working your way up because there were some good local groups. Um, but you had to be good to get on the floral. You know, the, the competition was pretty stiff. At 15, I got a bit more adventurous. You had to be 18 to get in the floral. And I was 6 foot 5. I used to comb my hair back like Elvis and, you know, look really cool and smoke cigarettes. And, you know, I kind of sidled my way in and uh, going with some trepidation because as all the local hard cases went to settle business and things, it was a, it was a rough, very rough place. Hey, <laughs> switched all the lights off at 12 o'clock. Oh, God. And as everybody pressed against the front of the stage to see him, and he came on, he, he was shining a bike lamp up at himself. It was absolutely horrendous and then it all started all this screaming and Chopin's death march and next thing he's all over the place throwing handfuls of maggots all over the girls in the audience. He's going in the bouffant hairstyles and down the front of the dresses. It was absolute mayhem. He was, uh, he was, sw he was swinging out over the audience with this huge knife that was painted red. It was obviously paint. I thought it was blood. I was terrified. Absolutely terrified. I thought the blood was absolutely nuts. I mean he had his hair two foot long which was impossible at the time. You know, it was the days after the arm in the short back and sides. Yeah. And uh, it, they actually said at the floor at the time, if he had your hair as long as such as you could get in for free, it was impossible to grow your hair that long in Lancaster. But up till then, I'd wanted to, you know, buy a Stratocaster and, uh, and, and an echo chamber and, and do dance steps like the shadows. You know, I came out of there, I was absolutely impressed. I thought, I really want to be in the savages. That's what I want to be, that's what I want to do. I gave up playing and I decided to write a book on the 10 golden years of rock and roll, I thought, in Morgan, Put a lot of work into it. And uh, I decided that I wasn't getting enough people coming to me, so I decided to put a concert on and rerun 1964. And I thought, I went through all this, I thought, who can I put on to headline? I thought, well, I know the Rolling Stones have played there, but they're a million quid. So that's out. <laughs> that's out. Uh, and then when I added it up, it turned out that Such had done it six times. Nobody else had. Got in touch with Such direct and booked him to play. He agreed to do it on a Thursday night for 1400 quid. And then I had all the other, I had four other groups at the time uh, that had all played at the floral before. Uh, I, was, I, I had all them to pay and it cost me about 4,000 pounds to actually put the concert on. And we managed to break even which isn't bad going for a wet Thursday night in a more sterilic ballroom in Morecambe. You don't often get the chance to fulfil these kind of ambitions. You know, Man at Bashir Stadium it was the floral lot, but I wanted to be in the Savages and play at the floral lot.